Welcome to Message in the Music. I'm Josh. And I'm Becky. We are so honored to have an amazing guest with us today, Halloran Hill. He's a singer-songwriter. He's written songs for people like Bishop T.D. Jakes, Take Six, Fred Hammond. And he's also composed music for one of the greatest voices oh. of our entire generation, Whitney Houston. Wow. None other than Whitney Houston. Wow. He's also an author, a motivational speaker, a radio host, a TV host, and so much more. So be sure and stay tuned in. Message in the music starts right now. Welcome to Message in the Music. We are so honored to have Halloran Hill as our guest today. Hal, welcome to the show, man. I'm excited to be here. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. This is like our third event that we have done together yes. in the past year. You probably don't know that, but we've been tracking. We right. <laughs> it's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. To us. Yeah. We did Kingdom Culture together, our, right. our worship conference. We did uh, Kenny Springs, and this is our third. So I consider that if we get to hang out anymore, I'm just going to consider us best friends. We are. We are. <laughs> well, we're right? best friends day one. So. We're right. doing Christmas together, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll be at your house. Year. Okay, we're That's excited. Right. <laughs> and speaking of kingdom culture, um, we were so honored to have you as a guest. Yes. And here's the thing. Your message, like, rocked the whole conference. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, some people couldn't say it. They wrecked the whole conference. but And that's a good thing, by the way. Uh, and it's not destroy it. It was unbelievable yes. what you did and what yes. you brought. Um, we are still getting reports to this day literally, of how their lives are changed. Yes. Wow. Yes, sir. And still, literally last week, got a, a request for your CD. Wow. I'm like, it's been a year. I lost my CD. Can you please get me one? I was like, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think that owes, though, to you guys create a great atmosphere for people to, wow. to share their ministry and their art. And that was the thing that kind of moved me most about um, being with you guys. The Spirit is with you. And so, you know, that's what we found in producing art and producing music, that the toughest thing a lot of times is to capture an authentic experience. Mm -hmm. And in order to capture an authentic experience, you have to create an atmosphere where people feel comfortable releasing themselves. Yeah, that's right? true. And so we had, you know, I had a great time at the mm -hmm. conference, but you guys set the atmosphere such that mm -hmm. people were ready to receive. Because the one thing I have learned is that wisdom is for the willing. Mm -hmm. That's good. Right? You you can never force wisdom or understanding or knowledge on anyone. Okay. There has to be, there has to be a willingness to receive. And you guys do a great job of setting the stage mm -hmm. for people and putting them in a position where they don't feel threatened or where they feel like, you know what, it's important for us to receive. So that really speaks to the way you guys are leading your ministry. I mean, yeah. that's that's yeah. what the real thing is. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That mm -hmm. is awesome. We had people that, not emotional people who just want to throw out a catchphrase, countless, that yeah. literally said, your message changed their life. Wow. Yeah. 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 And these are people we know personally who, who aren't <laughs> given to things, saying things like that. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, wow. Yeah. All they talked about was you. It changed my life. And I'm like, okay, wow, thank God. It was his idea to have you come. Thank God. Because there were people there. We even prayed that God would send the right people. Yeah. Well, one of those was you, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But we prayed that God would bring the right people to the conference to hear whatever they needed to hear and have their life changed. And we heard it over and over and over and over because of you. Right, so <laughs> so that really circles back to what we were just saying. If you guys are praying in expectancy, mm. that God is gonna sing, send not only, um, I always like to say, when hope meets hope, miracles happen. Wow, so there's good. hope the verb and hope the noun. Mm. Um, hope is uh, desire accompanied by confident expectation, mm. right? Mm. So when you hope, you have a desire and a confident expectation. Hope the noun means the person or place of last resort, yes, sir. right? Mm. So anywhere you see in the Bible miracles happening, you see a person who has hope mm. running into someone who is willing to be hope. 
Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. So when you pray in expectancy, would you send somebody with a message, but when you would you send somebody that needs that yes. message, what you're seeing is the intersection of that. And that's the real thing because I, I would love to maybe take some credit for having brought something unique or wonderful. I am not riffing on original source material. All the stuff that I shared is from God. Wow. Mm. Right? That's good. What, what I always hope is just to be a clean conduit. Is, yeah. is not to have and not to have any kind of sclerosis that kind of clogs up the pipe so I, it doesn't get through. Wow. Yeah. But but you guys are the ones that set the stage so that mm -hmm. so that I can transmit what people need. But what they needed to hear was from God. Let's yeah. make no mistake about that. Sure. They didn't need to hear from me. I just happened to be a uh, an available vessel for that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. wow. One thing that amazed me when you were there, you stayed literally yes. until they were vacuuming the floors <laughs> and, and shutting the doors and, and locking yourself. And I'm trying to get you to leave. <laughs> Somebody was over there playing the deacon and flipping the light switch. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, it's I was time worried. To go. I'm like, he's wanting to go and people won't let him go. <laughs> I'm like, ah. But you shared with like a handful of people. Every person that walked up to you, you yes. didn't just be like, oh, it's nice to meet you. Let's take a picture. You said, yes. let me tell you something really quick. Yes. And I, I, one of them was my twin brother, Jason. Um, Pastor Jeremy yeah, was another one. Of our one. Pastors. He still talks about yes. it. Um, so my question to you is, who is that person in your life? Hmm. When you look to have motivation, when you look to have mentorship, who is that person? Hmm. That is, that's a really good question. Um, that's, a, that's a really interesting question. I would, I would say my sister hmm. is probably the... Is, is probably the closest person to that wow. for me day in and day out. It's, it's my sister, there's wow. no doubt. So I talk to her every day and she is an anointed, godly woman that is, um, I call her a titanium angel, right? Wow. Yeah. She, she's, she's phenomenal. And she's that, per she's that person. But then I also run to, to books. I'm always reading. And so I find a lot of encouragement in the books that I read. Mm. And the audio books I listen to. That's that's a big part of how that happens for me. It's yes, my sir. sister, I live. Wow. Because when you give and give and give, yes. I've learned. Yes. You have to be replenished. Yes. You have to be filled up. Yeah. You right. have to have that in your life as well. Otherwise, you're running on right. fumes and how right. can you help someone else? So. Right. right. Okay, speaking of, we were talking about this earlier. Because I, I was telling him the other day, I said, I see Halloran Hill. And I just assume he's always Halloran Hill. And, you know, I was saying to him, it's unfortunately, I guess, your job to encourage people. And that is a blessing and a gift, and it's humbling. And I asked him, I said, do you think he has days, like the rest of us, where you just really don't want to do it? And you just don't even want to get out of bed? I just want to stay home with my coffee, and I don't want to leave. And I don't want to be Halloran Hill today. Please tell me you have those days. That and if so, so what so. does get if you not, going? If not, I quit. How do you do it? It's my question. <laughs> so, so first of all, uh, the answer to your question is yes. And uh, second, today was actually one of those days. Oh, wow. right? okay. so, so, you would never know it. You would never know it. So, so today is this day, man. Oh. I woke up this morning. And I had meetings starting at 7 o'clock this morning. And I'm literally laying in the bed. And I'm like... I don't want to do the day. I just don't want to. Right. At all. I don't feel like it. I feel better already. Just, no, I'm just, I'm, this <laughs> is therapy <laughs> for us. That's for I sure. I don't feel like turning it on. I don't yeah. feel like being that guy. Wow. I don't. I, I just didn't feel it at all. And um, but I just decided to do the next to do the next moment. Yeah. Right. Mm, that's good. So that's I had good. The, yeah. you know seven o'clock was what I had coming up. So I said. Why don't you do that? When you get to the end of that, then do okay. the next moment. And I love it. Wow. Made it through, you know, what turned out to be a pretty, pretty good day. But I had, a, I had a, you know, you have some experiences that, that give you an epiphany, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. First of all, the first biggest fallacy that I see is the belief that there is a point of psychological, or physical, or spiritual stasis. In other words, you get to a place where everything locks yes. in mm -hmm. and you're good. Right. That's a fallacy. That's a lie. 
It just doesn't, that doesn't happen. Yeah. So you create a lot of cognitive dissonance for yourself by even having that expectation. Yeah. If I'm saved, if I'm positive, right. I'm supposed yeah. to always have good days. Yeah. So, so if you have that expectation <laughs> of yourself, and that expectation is a lie, then ultimately what you do is you let yourself down all the time. Right. Sure, that's a good point. Which wreaks havoc on self-esteem. Yeah. Because you have a track record of not living up to what you believe you should mm -hmm. when you're trying to live up to something that you should. Wow, that's <laughs> love it. Does that make sense? Yes, wow. love it. So this is, when that, this is when that epiphany hit me. I went to, there's a, there is a 40, I think the guy spent 40 or 50 million dollars. Anyway, there's a multi-million dollar Formula One racetrack outside of Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> it's called Barber Motorsports. And it is home to Porsche's North American Driving School. So if you want to learn to race, they have a school that Porsche has where you can learn to race. You can, you can do hobby racing or if you want to try to qualify to be a real race car driver, you can do it there. Uh, Porsche does all of their driver training there as well, so if you buy one of their vehicles and you want to take one of their one, two, or three day courses, you can really learn the nuance of these fine driving machines. And I love Porsches and I love great engineering. I've been a car guy since my first Hot Wheels oh, wow. and Matchbox, oh, right? Wow. So I love that. <laughs> yeah. So I was invited to go down to Barber to spend a day on the track. So we get to drive everything. We drive everything. And so I just taken a hot lap around the track, final one. I was in this GT3. I'd never gone this fast. Oh. You know, I have mm -hmm. this expert race driver beside you going, push it, push it, push it. Yeah. And, and you're feeling your power, the handling, <laughs> and whatever. And so we pull the cars in, and then we're doing Q&A with the lead instructor. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I had a, a little red Porsche, and tires were killing me, right? So you would only get about 10,000 miles out of a set of tires and, you know, tires were a thousand dollars a piece or six hundred dollars a piece. Some, you know, if you got really great ones. So I said, do you have any questions? And so I said, tires and brakes. I mean, you know, this, this is expensive like that. And I said, I said, how often do you go through tires here on the track? And he says, well, he said, on a hot day like today, if we can get 300 miles out of a set of tires, right, we're doing good. Wow. wow. And he said, every night, we send the cars into the garage, and they get all new brakes every night. And he said, our instruction with every car to the chief mechanic is, do whatever this car needs so that it can perform the way it was designed to perform, mm -hmm. which means every night, we do whatever maintenance is necessary. Yeah. And so I said, tires and brakes, you go through a lot of them. He said, well, when you want to go fast, you want to make sure you have traction. And when you want to stop, you're going 120, 130, 50, 60 miles an hour. You want to make sure you can stop. You tell me, should those brakes be really good and should those tires be really good? I'm like, yeah. And he yeah. said, the reason you go through more tires and brakes with a Porsche is a complement to the engine. When the engine is that powerful mm -hmm. that it churns through tires and brakes it really is a testament to the performance of the vehicle that's wow. good that's oh good goodness. Like, oh wow yeah. and he said so we don't think about what it cost and we don't get mad that the tires wear down we don't get mad that the cars run out of fuel it is expected that's why the car has a fuel gauge yeah. we know the gas is going to run out that's yeah. why there are sensors on the brake pads we know they're going to wear out. Yeah. Why is it that we as human beings don't believe we're ever supposed to run out of fuel or need That's tires good. or brakes? Especially if we have asked God to let us perform at a higher level. Well, come on now. <laughs> right? You're about so, to get thick in here. <laughs> are you writing this down? Well, Please write this down. Well, so, so, so you see what I'm saying? Oh, so, mercy. So, so it is unrealistic for a person who has dreams, goals, and aspirations that wants to function at a really high level yes. to expect that you won't have down days. That's powerful. As unrealistic as it would be to be in a high performance right. car and never expect to have the tires wear out. Yeah. The tires wear out because you're driving hard. Oh man, that is powerful. 
So if if now if I can if I can get you to adjust your expectation so that you go, I am going to be tired right. of burnout. Then what you'll do is you'll plan for the burnout. Mm. Wow. You'll have a so chief good. mechanic. You'll have a chief mechanic. Oh, mercy. You'll have a garage. You'll start to notice. You know what? I get burned out about every five or six days. Wait a mm. minute. The Bible does say, remember the Sabbath day to right. keep it holy. Yeah. I must need to take it into the garage once a week. Oh. Right? I must need to do something on a daily basis to feed and replenish my spirit. And I have to get rid of this expectation that I'm supposed to always be on. Yes. No. Yes. And you can't Love drive it. and fuel up at the same time. Love it. You pull into the gas station, you stop to put the gas in. When you put new brakes on, you stop to put new brakes on. When you put new tires on, you stop to put the tires on. Which means, if I want to go fast, there will be times I just have to stop. Does that does yes. that make sense? Yeah. If we weren't recording this, I, I, I promise you I'd just be sitting like, I mean, I mean, I mean, I and I'd probably be running around. I want to be looking at you. I'd like, like, I right mean, here. really. What's awesome is you it's just amazing. said you just said bad. Uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but what what one thing I took from that is. You just said when you have a bad day, I don't want to say you should be excited about it. I know you should be expecting about it, but that's actually a good sign that you're driving and pushing driving forward. Hard. And Ooh. you're moving with passion. Love it. Absolutely. And it's also, you wouldn't know it was a bad day if you hadn't had a series of good ones. Wow. Well, um, okay. <laughs> right. Can we just end right here? Because there's no way it's going to get better. Have oh, mercy. my goodness. Have mercy. Okay. Oh, mercy. Okay. Well, I don't want to switch gears. So, so how do we recover? Way. But I think <laughs> one, one yeah. thing that I, I share with people a lot is that you should have a maintenance tool set. So one thing that ref refreshes and replenishes the spirit. You know, Jesus always went off a great while yeah. before day yeah. and he spent time with God. So I, I have this thing that I mm -hmm. share with people called the 1% solution. So there are 1,440 minutes in a day. 15 minutes is roughly 1% of your day. Mm. So I call it 555. When I don't do it, I really, I don't do well. Five minutes reading the word or something positive or motivational. Five minutes meditating, which is being still, Mother. listening to your heart and listening to what God is saying to you. And then five minutes in prayer, but using the, the model prayer, the Lord's prayer, yeah. as your framework. That's good. Yeah. So you take the petitions in the Lord's Prayer and use them as pockets. Mm. So for instance, when you get to, um, the, and the one thing you'll love about this prayer and why it, why it does something for your spirit, selfishness is the pathway to misery. So mm. if you're selfish, you will be miserable. It just That's just the way it works. So God is always trying to get us to, to broaden our perspective and our horizon. Yeah. And in this model prayer, it starts with the word our. Mm. So immediately I have to accept you as my brother and my sister. Wow. I have to say our father. Yeah. And then when I start into the petitions, one of them is give. Give us this day our daily bread. So I have to ask God not only to meet my needs, but I have to ask him to yes. meet your needs as well. Mm. So when you get to give us this day our daily bread, that's a pocket in which you place the things that you perceive that you need provision for. Yeah. So God, when you say, give us this day our daily bread, that's where you write in your journal, God, this is what I think I need today. I don't know what I'm going to do about the, the rent. I don't know what I'm going to, but would you give not only me what I need, but give us my, you know, forgive us our trespasses or debts. God, these are the things that I know, I'm conscious of, that I need your forgiveness for. Yeah. But then also, would you give me an ability to forgive others? And so these are the people I need to release right now. Lead us not into temptation, pocket. These are the temptations I'm dealing with today, right? Yeah. These are the things I need you to steer me clear of. Deliver us from evil. Now this is the stuff I may already be in that I need you to kick the door in yes. and rescue me from. Yes, sir. And so if you kind of slowly work your way through the petitions of the Lord's Prayer every day, ending on the power source, which is for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. You'll find that that 15 minutes will at least begin the process of releasing you into the day so you can try. Wow. 
Okay. Now, speaking of give us this day our, our daily bread, I was asking him, I can't even imagine going back to 1990. You shared mm. this story. Right. And I was like, I literally can't believe that's true. I can't believe you had a wife. Yes. A one-year-old son. Yep. Mm -hmm. And literally no idea. No job. So no job. I was no. in the Virgin Islands running some radio stations. Hurricane Hugo hits. Um, and the short version is we lost everything. Oh, my goodness. My sister, my sister lived here in Knoxville. And we literally didn't have enough month money to move our things back so we put them in boxes we didn't have many things and we sent them six weeks before we came to Knoxville they used to be able to they had something at the post office called book rate hmm. and you could ship books in large boxes but it would take four to six weeks for them to get there at a very low cost so we sent our stuff back book rate before I came back to Knoxville um, I had my sister send me a Knoxville phone book. And I literally got the names and phone numbers of every radio and TV station in town. And so I get back in town and I had $300. I spent $200 on a blue suit. And my job every day was to get on the what was then the K-Trans bus. And I would just ride up and down Kingston Pike. And I would stop at businesses and I would offer my services. Yeah. And I walked into the radio station, <coughs> and guys said, we're not hiring. And by the way, we have very little tur turnover. This was at WIBK, a very successful radio station. Yeah. And I happened to hear a lady upstairs that was upset because she had to work through the holidays. And I looked at the owner of the radio station, and I said, why don't you use me as caulk? And he said, caulk. I said, you know, you use caulk to fill a gap. I said, I've done everything in a radio station from sweeping floors to managing, why don't you let her go on vacation, move somebody up, I'll fill in whatever gap is left so she can leave. Wow. So he said to me, um, so you came in the door, you want to solve a problem day one. And I said, well, I got a family to feed, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm a little desperate. But he said, wow, he said, if you've got that kind of hustle or whatever, I call it desperation, um, you know what? I'm going to hire you for 90 days, work through the holidays. He said, but you have to get her approval, right? Ooh. So I'm arranged for you to take lunch with her. So I did all the research I could on her. <laughs> found out that, that she yeah. loved um, China, and she was a big, <laughs> she traveled to China a lot. She loved Chinese culture. So I called the University of Tennessee, called the Humanities Building, asked for whoever taught Mandarin, and I learned how to say, Hello, you look nice today in Chinese. I don't remember how to say that now. Okay, wow. That's but, the next level. Sorry. That's taking it to the next level right there. Wow. That's taking so, it to the next level. So uh, I show up at lunch <laughs> and I say something to her in Chinese. And she just was like, and she's like, you speak Chinese? I said, no, I am sucking up to you because <laughs> I need a job. Let's, yeah. let's be um, clear. And she yeah. just laughed. Um, and, I, and I started working there and everything changed. But um, once again, I was not using wisdom that I had. I was using wisdom that I had gleaned from great people and from the Word, um, right? Mm -hmm. Proverb, seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. Yes. He shall not stand before men or obscure men. So that mm -hmm. if, if you show yourself to be diligent over time, it helps you, period. It yeah. works. So I was fortunate. They hired me and they don't know. When did you go from radio to television? I know because you do radio and you have your own TV show. It's about 15 years ago, a guy comes to me. Um, I had been offered TV anchor positions and I just never felt like that's where I really wanted to be because I love freedom. And I got the best job in town. Uh -huh. I mean, radio is just, I mean, I. I <laughs> But a guy came to me and said, if you did do TV, what would you, what would you want to do? And I said, I want to do a show about possibility. I'd like to interview people about possibility, something positive. Mm -hmm. And so then he arranged lunch with the general manager of Channel 10. And he didn't know I was coming to the lunch. And I didn't know he was coming to the lunch. And so he just, he just forced a collision. And to his credit, the general manager at the time, Jeff Lee, said, I like the idea. 
Let's do it. Oh. All right. So, 15 years later, we're closing in on 400 episodes. Oh my um, we've, we've, we've got a we've got a great franchise and a great brand, yes. and uh, and it's because people have told us their great stories. But yeah. some guy. I have to wonder because you were. In our opinion, of course. Not just some guy. His name was Bill Govins. Bill, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to ask. You have a show, radio and TV. You write songs. Mm -hmm. We haven't even covered your whole bio, which is amazingly impressive. And obviously, you're, you have a family. This whole list that's so amazing, what is the one thing that you're most passionate about? Out that's of the whole question. list. Yeah, that's good. Of everything you get to do. Yeah. Um... I really don't have a good answer for you. Um, to me, it's all one thing. Oh, mm -hmm. that's good. That's right? good. So it's kind of like saying, which leg do you like? <laughs> wow. I need both of them, no, actually. Sure. <laughs> yeah, they're all necessary. Which eyeball is the one that you prefer? I love that. Right? Wow. So it's all part of being a, a creative and being a communicator. So if you look at it, everything I do is related to communication. Yes. So it's all some form of communication. So I write, teach, and speak. I do radio, TV, film. Uh, I do some mentoring and coaching, but it's all built around communication. So it's all, it's all creative, and it's all related to communicating ideas. Yeah. A package. Yeah. <laughs> I know you can't. I know you can't stand to be puffed up, but I, I have to tell you, your character from day one that I've ever met you has impressed me yes. in such a way. We met 18 years ago at First Baptist Church Concord. You sang with, uh, I think Devin Prater was there. Oh. And his, no, it was a Grace in Motion. Grace in Motion. Grace in oh, Motion. Goodness. And you all opened up for the Martins. And you come yes. and sit on the front row. He did. Come and sit on the front row right next to me and my twin brother, Jason. Shout out to my brother. <laughs> and and when they would do stuff, you hit us in the leg. Like, did you hear that? And we're all like, love <laughs> fists and all this. <laughs> My brother saw you at Walmart, like, sometime after that. And you pointed to him and said, hey, how did you like that concert? Oh, my goodness. And my brother comes home like, you will not believe this. <laughs> Triple H, remember my Best name. You remembered me. <laughs> uh, so we met then, but, so that's always impressed me, but we were fortunate to have the opportunity to play music for you. Uh. Uh, when you came and uh, did an Oak Ridge, uh, speak at Oak Ridge uh, YMCA or Boys Club, yeah. I forget which one it was. It's about 10 or 15 years ago, and uh, most people don't know this. And he's one of the most humble men I've ever yeah. met. He's a singer yes. and a half. Yes. I, sometimes, in my little five, five, and five, I'm gonna say, Lord, can you give it to me like how it's got it? I'm singing. Um, but he's a singer. He is yes. a songwriter, um, and. Well, he hates to name drop, but I'm gonna I'm gonna name drop one if that's all right. Um, well, what, well, I'm gonna name drop a couple. One of my favorite uh, artists I was listening to earlier is Fred Hammond, yeah. and you've written a lot for him. Oh. Yeah, uh, Trinity it. Five Seven. Yes. And I, but I'm gonna stop because no, I want you, uh, virtue. 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 Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I want I want you to I want you to um, share the story that you shared that that evening because it's stuck with me literally for 15 years now. You said. You were uh, writing songs and you were uh, diving into the radio and, and a lot of people gave you criticism. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll never forget the quote you said. But the criticism stopped and they stopped making fun of me the moment my phone rang and Whitney Houston was on the other line. <laughs> wow. Tell that story, please. Well, I had a, a, a friend, uh, Mervyn Warren, who ha happened to be the, the music... Um, he was the he was the he was the head of all the music for the movie The Preacher's Wife, oh. and there was a scene that they needed uh, a new song for, and he called me and invited me to co-write uh, the tune for Whitney Houston. Oh. And I remember that night that they had finished recording it with Whitney Houston, and uh, I get a phone call from the studio, and you can hear Whitney Houston in the background going, "I love this song." And, you know, they had a kids choir and, you know, Denzel was there and it was just, it was one of those moments. And I, I do remember, you know, I, I remember saying something like that in that speech, but I do remember that when you have certain moments of validation, it changes how people perceive your work, mm -hmm. right? 
but I I struggle with that, right? Because I as 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 crazy as this might as crazy as this might seem, I used to always tell people that the only thing that you need to do if you want to be a writer or want to be whatever is to do it. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So the, the sentence that I use with all writers is writers write. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the day you start writing, you were a writer. I didn't say you were a great one. Sure. <laughs> right. I just said you were a right, a, uh, a writer. So I always function from from this place. I love writing music. Oh. It brings me great joy. Yeah. Right. The the fame or the recognition or the money is great, but it is not greater than that feeling of that spirit of creativity. Yeah flowing through you. Yeah. If you've ever had one of those mm -hmm. moments where you're yes. creating or performing and you feel this rush of joy, <laughs> the complete joy, yeah. that's the thing people spend billions of dollars to feel. Wow. wow. Yeah, they do. That's beautiful. Right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're feeling it right now. You're feeling that's it amazing. for free, but we will discount that as valid Wait, this is not real until somebody acknowledges or pays me for it. Yeah, That's when true. that becomes real. Sure. Right? So I always said, man, I love to write. And now everything that happens after that is gravy. Just extra. This is extra. So I, I always thought, man, I'm going to write until the day I die. Wow. I'm going to write until the day I die. So I tend to, at first when people would laugh at me or they would not understand what I was doing, I think I took it the wrong way initially. I think their laughter struck me the wrong way because I hadn't arrived at full buy-in of this concept that I'm saying. I wanted their affirmation to make it okay for me to do what I knew I loved to do. Wow. Now I know. Right. I mean, I'm going to get joy from, you know, I'm working on wow. two projects right now and I'm having a blast just, <laughs> you know, working on those projects. But it did shift in the minds of other people when they saw, hey, he's writing on this level for the, these different people that I respect. But qualitatively, the work was not much different than, wow. you know, other stuff that I've written. So don't worry too much if people laugh about you, uh, laugh at you because you have ridiculous dreams or outside goals. Um, I, I talk, <laughs> I talk about what. What tough stuff. love is. And I, am I talking too no, much? No, no, no. You're pulling the heartstrings. No, you're, you're getting them you're right pulling, here. You're pulling the heartstrings. You're getting so, them. So 1 Corinthians 13 um, talks about love. And it gets down to the end and it says, Love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all yes. things, mm -hmm. endureth all things. But right before it gets to, you know, the grand finale, the crescendo, which is love never fails. It says, love endureth all yes. things. Yeah. Endureth. And endure. The word endure, the prefix en means to make. Dura means durable or to make hard or to mm -hmm. make strong. So when you endure, you make strong. You make wow, strong. Wow, mercy. Goodness and gracious. so when I started thinking about having a fail-proof love, the kind of love that never fails, it is preceded by something that makes you durable enough. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so I started studying the way samurais made swords, this traditional sword making process. The first thing you do is you take a piece of steel and you put it in the fire and you hammer it into the shape of a sword. It's not a sword yet, mm -hmm. but you heat it up and you hammer it into the shape of a sword. Then once you've hammered it into much the shape of a sword, then you begin to fire it because you have to temper the metal. Because the metal, if, if metal is that malleable, then if you can imagine if you're in a sword fight and every time you took a swing, it took a chink out of the metal or it put a dent in the metal, it's not durable enough yeah. for the battle. So you have to do what, what is called um, strengthening the steel. Put it in the fire, and the swordsman watches, and when it gets to a certain color and whatever, he pulls it out of the fire and plunges it into this tall cylinder of, of cold oil. So it goes from fire to literally ice. 
and rapidly changing the temperature changes the molecular structure of the metal. Now what the sword maker in this, in this video I was watching said, he said it is not until the sword is hard enough that it can hold an edge. Mm. So you could never sharpen it unless it was hard enough. So you can't have an edge if you haven't been hardened. My goodness. Right? So, when people laugh at you, when they ridicule you, let's, let's look at the phases. So, there was a phase where I felt like I was getting hammered. Wow. There was a phase I felt like I was in the fire. There was a phase I felt like I was out in the cold. Mm -hmm. But surviving hammering takes the fear out of hammering. Yeah. Surviving That's fire good, takes the fear out of That's fire. Good. Surviving the cold takes the fear out of the cold, and it ends up giving you an edge. Mm. Right? <laughs> ends up giving you an edge. So when I look back on people laughing at me or, you know, whatever they did, I don't know that they had any malicious intent as much as laughter might have been the nervous response to a right. dream that was bigger than they could imagine. Right. <laughs> yes, yes, right? uh, oh, yes. So I, yes. I, but them laughing at me, feeling the rejection, feeling hammered, certified my love for the art. Because yes. you don't keep doing things if you don't love them. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you'll quit. Yeah. I don't want anybody to laugh at me. I don't, I don't care. I love this. Yeah. I needed it. It's what gave me an edge. And it gave my love an edge. Yeah. It gave my love an edge because my love is more durable. I'm going to love you anyway. Right. Mm. I can go to battle because I love you anyway. Yeah. I can cut my ego out of the way because I don't love you anyway. Wow. So when I look back on that now, I go, oh, that wasn't, that wasn't a bad thing. That was a good thing. I needed the reps. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what a perspective. I'm not sure if this is an interview or therapy. <laughs> oh, I'm loving it. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's therapy right now. This okay, is, if I'm being real. in the team. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an interview anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Speak to the dreamers for a second. Because yeah. I'm one of them. And I know she is yeah. as well. Speak to the dreamers. You just broke it down in the best way possible. Oh. But I want you to speak directly to them, if you will. That, uh, first of all, whatever's on your heart. But secondly, there are people that's like, I'm not even going to take a step. Because here's the problem. If y'all are laughing at me, and I've always said that we talked about this earlier. The one reason why people don't um, get your dreams or understand it, or a lot of times even support it, is because God put, didn't put it in them. Yes. He put it in you. Mm -hmm. So yep. speak to the dreamers that said, if I step out, I'm going to be laughed at. If I step out, I'm going to be ridiculed. But another thing is, and then I'll be quiet. What They have all these people that are against them, but when they're against themselves. Mm -hmm. And you add all that together. You're like, there's just no way. Oh. Do I even even attempt to do it? Can you speak to the dreamers? Yeah, um, just do something. <laughs> I mean, that. I mean, that's. I would say to every dreamer out there, do something. Right? Go do what it is you love. Um, don't don't be too distracted by how people are reacting to what you're doing because if they don't understand your dream, um, and then the other thing too is. Um, people will show you who they are. They will yeah. self-select. Yes. So wow. I always thank God for the revelation. Yes. That's good, man. I agree. Like, right. okay, now I see. I'm I'm you. You. You you. Think, he's no. thanking God, and we're crying ready to hit somebody. Yeah, but I'm with you on that one. I'm, I like, I'm thank you. Okay, thank you for that. So, That's so good, for, man. So the first place I would say to dreamers is lean into the joy of whatever it is that you do and lean into yeah. the craft. The joy of the doing of the craft itself. Forget about it as a means to an end and thank God that out of seven and a half billion people on the planet, he knocked on your door That's to drop good. in something creative. That's good. He gave you a dream, an ambition, an idea. Yeah. You were chosen. Yeah. And he gave you that work for joy. God mm -hmm. always calls us to do a work and it's to give us joy, mm -hmm. right? It is to give us joy. So, so uh, I was talking to uh, your camera guy, and he said, I'm, I'm learning how to do this stuff. And he has so much joy mm -hmm. in the learning. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll get to a point where it'll all be technical stuff, and people will be talking about camera angles and aperture and lighting, and everybody will be chest-thumping about what's the latest <laughs> equipment. Yeah. 
and it won't feel like it feels right now just to have the joy of the moment. Yes. And I think that's one thing that's lost on people with dreams is they surrender their joy for the opinions of other people as opposed to just, man, I'm going to do this because I love it. That's right. And, and letting the love lead you to craft, right? Yes, sir. So, so we all want, want to get better, and I think when you, when you decide, I'm going to master my craft, I'm going to really get good at this, like, I'm not just going to play with this. I'm going to get really great at this. It's going to take up so much of your time and energy <laughs> that by the time you look back, yeah. they've gone from laughing and loving. That's <laughs> right? that's, I mean, that's just, yeah. that's just how it happens, right? Yes, you're in their shed and you're working on your craft and then you look up five or six years later and people are like, oh, wow, what, what, yes. what, what, what happened? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So that's, that's really what, what I did was I, I had this kind of a defiant joy. I'm like, I love writing music. I love creating. And I got to this one place, this one period of my life where I said it takes 10 years to kind of start to approach mastery in any field. So I said, 10 years, I'm going to write a song every day. I'm just going to grind it out every day. I have a friend down in Huntsville, Alabama. His name is Wayne Buckner. He did a song every day for a year. And I think he posted a video to YouTube every day, right? Wow. And he ended up writing 300 plus songs in one year. And he told me, he said, man, it was transformative. He said, wow. I, I had so many breakthroughs just from the doing of the work. Yeah. Right? So criticism keeps you from, from doing the work. Um, so that's what, I mean, that's what I would say to everybody that has a dream. Wow. Put a plan together, but lose yourself in the joy of the work and for whom you're doing it, mm -hmm. as unto yeah. the Lord. Right? Yes, sir. Don't be distracted because sooner or later, It'll, it'll come around. And you need it. You need the haters. You need the critics. That's you good. need the pushback. You need the hard stuff. <laughs> it is necessary. It is yeah. what it is what helps you become great. That's so true. Wow. Wow. I was um I was thinking about like I, I there's a guy named John Stoddard who just recorded one of my songs um, the week of, of this particular recording. I'm as excited about this song as I was about oh. any song I've ever written. The song is entitled Block My View. Mm. Um, these are the lyrics. And this will speak to whether or not I have bad days, you'll see I do. <laughs> um, who made the mirror? Who would invent such pain? Because mm. when I see myself, I see my shame. Mm. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Watch me rise, watch me fall. So do me a favor, Lord, to get me through. Stand in the mirror and block my view. Okay. <laughs> block my view till okay. all I see is you. Stop. Verse 2. People are staring. I wonder what they see. Well, if you stand in between us, then they won't see me. Because the man in the mirror doesn't have a clue. But if you stay in the middle, then we both see you. So... Do me a favor, Lord, to get me through. Stand in the mirror and block my view till all I see is you. Bridge, I'm asking you to get in the way so I won't get in the way till you get through. Will you be the man in the mirror till the man in the mirror looks like you? Verse 3. Does the Father in heaven see all the stains I see? Or does he just see you when he looks for me? Because if I see your reflection when I take a second glance, I know the man in the mirror got a second chance. So do me a favor, Lord, to get me through. Stand in the mirror and block my view. Block my view till all I see is you, till I look like you. I'm as excited about that. I, I, I'm excited with you right now because, whoa. As I was about anything I wrote no, 20 sorry. years ago. And to me... That is the greatest validation uh -huh. of what, what I am and what I do, is that at this stage in my life, I'm every bit as excited yes. about the craft and, and that experience and that moment as I was before. Wow. To me, that's the thing. Sure, sure. Okay, that's overwhelming. Did I tell you he was a writer? Did we not tell you he was a writer? I was asking him earlier if he ever, you were talking about what an amazing singer he is, and I was asking, does he ever sing? No, not really. He I'm, does. What? But you got to pull it out of him. And see, oh. I, I, I'll let, you have not because you ask not. 
And so I was always like, can you just sing just a chorus of a line of anything? I, I, and if, if you don't want to, it's all right. Mary had a little lamb. Oh, we don't man. even care. Just oh. anything. <laughs> oh, man. What would I sing? Um, in the morning, before the sun rise, I hear you whisper, you still care that golden ribbon on the horizon first blush of daybreak says you are still there brand new morning brand new mercy brand new sunshine on my face gives me the courage to continue, my coat of armor is your amazing grace. So that was that was probably it was that was too hey. low. It was supposed to be somewhere way up, but I wasn't expecting that. Anyway. Can, I'm not a singer. Well, <laughs> Deep, okay, he says it all the time. Like I'm like his number one fan uh, all the time. But every, with Kingdom Culture and um, mm -hmm. King Springs, I was yeah. like. Can we just have him come? I know. And here's what they did to us now. They had you and uh, uh, Kenny Moore mm -hmm. and Kenny Springs and Chris Marion sing right before <laughs> us. Do you understand? I have my backpack on. And yeah, I was he was like, out the back we door. will not follow them. And you know what we were thinking the whole time? <laughs> I cried through your entire uh, praise and worship oh, service. No. I cried like, like, like. I haven't cried before. You should never second guess oh. or doubt any of that ever, oh. ever. I, I'm, That's Jesus. I'm as moved That's by Jesus, by you as anything I've ever experienced yes. in my life. It was powerful. It was a powerful moment for yeah. us. Me's gonna make me cry on I'm camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's but, not cool. Um, That's the truth. It, it really was. It was a powerful moment truth, for us because we're like yes, all those was. people are. You know, those heroes. people. Our and heroes. And they were coming like, what? Oh my goodness. And Jesus just Not crazy so anointing. You and all the people I mentioned, Chris Blue, Sean Stewart. Oh, these are people I've looked up to for like 15 years. We and, and we were all down there going, are you, what in the world is going on? I mean, got Kenny Springs, Kenny Moore, what? Oh. Just, yeah. These are people, again, people we looked oh. up to for 10 or 15 years. And to be... <laughs> On the other side of well, and, and, and seeing to you all, and even like, asked to be there, we were was, like, "What? Yeah. You sure?" Because wow, that was such an honor. We we just talked about that the other day. It came up on my newsfeed this week. Yeah, we that it had been guys. a year, yeah. and I was like, I called and I was like, "It's been a year, Kenny Springs event." And yeah. it was one of the greatest moments of our lives. It was, it really was. And we it, don't say it that. marked something it for did. us specifically. Really I don't know what it was that day. It was a, a well, shift. Well, know, know this. Um, <laughs> I have had the opportunity to be around some of the greatest musicians of our time. Mm -hmm. You guys are blessed. Mm -hmm. Make no doubt about it. Make, and we love you. Make yeah. no doubt about it. Sing here, yeah, you man. Step, you step up and you, you sing for him without any hesitation. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Never know how much that needs to be coming from you, man. <laughs> we really appreciate it. Oh, that's humbling. Yeah. Okay. To say that it's been an honor, mm. I, 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 those words seem yeah. completely pointless because, I mean, every time we're around you, yeah. it's just, it just pours out. We're sponges. Instantly. Like, it just yeah. pours out. You, It's almost like you can't help it. It just, yeah. it's amazing. And, and it just, you're so full of the, the goodness and the love of God yeah. that it just spills over yeah. on everybody yeah, around you. And that is... It's just such a blessing, and we were so excited. Not well, we're interviewing Halloran Hill. I'm like, what's he gonna say? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because it's gonna touch our heart. That's right. And it's gonna affect our lives in a positive way. Yes. And every time we know that, and it has never failed. Every time we've been around you, no matter what the event or situation, mm -hmm. there's at least one or usually twenty sentences that just, oh, <laughs> where right. did that come from? <laughs> we'll have to watch this over and over I mean, just to dissect. No, I'm serious oh. because it's so much to take in. It's an honor. Well, thank yeah. you. I mean, I'm honored to be an here. honor. Yeah. Can you tell the people um, the times of your radio show? Yeah. Sure. 
the television, what yeah. channel, Can you, uh, uh, your music on iTunes, how they get a hold of all of that? Okay, so my name is Halloran Hilton Hill. Uh, my radio show is on News Talk 98.7 FM in Knoxville, WOKI. I'm on every day from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, my television show is Anything is Possible. It airs on WBIR Channel 10 on Sunday morning at 11, Monday night at 9 on 10 News 2. And we have a YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube in the search bar, if you put AIP online for Anything is Possible online, our shows are cataloged and released there every week. I'm um, on Twitter, at Halloran. My name is spelled H-A-L-L-E-R-I-N. My website is HalloranHill.com, although it's not a great website at all. <laughs> and uh, that's it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, you've been watching Message in the Music. Make sure to stay tuned for more episodes. We have great things coming. We're just getting started. All right? We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. We wanted to let you know that we travel the country and minister at various events, and we would love the opportunity to share at your event. You can find us on Facebook at Joshison Ministries. You can also call us at 865-454-3353 or send an email to joshisonministries at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing from you soon. God bless.